Rafinha to Chelsea being reported back on tonight as patience is wearing thin with Barcelona from the Rafinha camp and from Leeds United. We're going to delve into the big claim that Frankie de Jong has point blank refused and rejected Eric Ten Hag and Manchester United. The pressure that the boss is now putting on the club to sign Anthony and, of course, uh, Sandro Martinez. Dembele also reportedly having signed a new deal or will renew his contract now with Barcelona. So we go back to the original story. What does that mean for Rafinha? Some interesting takes from some journalists. We are celebrating 250,000 subscribers on the show tonight. I've got Neeks, Tom Little backstage coming on to join us. Plus, we'll open up the lines for more. What I need from you is to smash the like button right now. If we hit 2,000 likes, I'm giving away 50. That's 50 free memberships to you, the viewers. Uh, and as I promised in the previous stream, every every super chat, ten pound or more, I'll do a shot. I'll do a shot of Grey Goose for you. I promise I would. It's uh, you might see drunk Terry tonight, completely sober right now, but we'll see. Smash that like and that share button. Let's go. <laughs> I just want to say a big thank you to everybody that is a subscriber of the Terrace, whether you've been here from day one, whether you've subscribed today, and this is only the second time you've ever seen us live. Um, very, very humbling to have a quarter of a million people subscribe to the channel. In terms of views, over 4 million views in the past month, and something like, something like 2.8 million unique viewers in that, which is just absolutely beyond my wildest dreams. And um, I, I just want to say thank you to you. You know, you are... Didn't really do much about planning the show tonight. We reached out to the group chat, said we're doing it, but it was more about doing a show for you all. So even if it was just me, I'm here for you. The party is with you lot. That's the idea. Um, so thank you very much indeed. Uh, Young here says, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, big up Terry. Uh, big up the Terrace. Thank you very much. I got to think as well, only four years ago, we had like 14,000 subscribers. Like the growth in that time period um, has been amazing. So uh, a big a big thank you to all of you. Um, I know that, the I and KJ and all the team. And I always, I'll forget someone's name uh, at some point tonight. Even when I was tweeting out last night, I was tagging everyone I could think of. And then somebody would comment and go, oh, well done. I'm like, oh, I should have tagged you. I'm just terrible with stuff like that. I've got most of the faces in. But there we go. Um, but the transfer stories have, have been a little bit quiet today, which gives you an idea that something somewhere is brewing. But what I found really interesting was these few stories that have come out, and I want everybody's thoughts and feelings. The first one being Dembele will extend his contract with Barcelona for two years. What does this mean and what does this look like for Chelsea and Rafinha? And then this was coupled by a story that came out from Nick. Nick Puel, who is a very credible journalist, who says that Rafinha is still keen to join Chelsea if Barca and Leeds can't close a deal in the next few days. Rafinha and Leeds are becoming impatient. Nick then himself goes on to say Barca are already testing the patience of, with so many clubs and players. But even Rafinha can be added to that list now. And I think what's really intriguing is that whether, you, whether you're Lewandowski, whether you're Frankie de Jong, whether you're... Rafinha and the clubs are connected to those deals. Everybody's growing frustrated. It is Barcelona, not Chelsea, not Leeds, not Man United, not Bayern Munich, who are hold Man City with Bernardo. No, no, it's Barca that's holding everything up here. And I think when Barca get their ducks in a row and really are ready to start buying or selling, I think you'll see a lot of these situations clear themselves up. So we're going to talk about them on the show, no doubt. Interestingly, as well, what's also come out this afternoon, you can see Sport yesterday said Frankie de Jong's priority is Man United. Sport today say that he has ruled out joining Manchester United because they have bad luck. The story today is that de Jong rejects Eric Ten Hag. I mean, just like last weekend, Man United fans going into meltdown because Laporta said that he wasn't for sale. As far as it stands right now, Man United are still in talks. There is a, a, a generally relaxed feeling at the club. There have been a few reports of some pessimism coming in, but that isn't about the player not wanting to join. At no point has anybody credible connected to Man United said there's fears the player wouldn't join. In fact, most Manchester United-based journalists are sort of like anything from 
terms have been agreed, and a few have said that, right down to they don't think it will be a problem, including Laurie Whitwell. But the report is he's rejected Man United. So I do want to get your take and I do want to get your thoughts. I mean, even Mark Goldbridge, he's been pretty negative about most stories so far this summer. You know, he's not a happy bunny. Even he thought, nah, I'm not, I'm not worried or panicked about it. And I was surprised. <laughs> I was surprised. I thought we were going to see a, a Goldbridge meltdown on that, but we didn't. So that's the interesting news there. Plus, what we're going to speak about on the show today as well is, is this from the brilliant Duncan Castles, that Eric Ten Hag pushes Man United to increase their offers for Lissandro and Anthony. Ajax yet to accept bids of 50 and 60 million um, euros, respectively. And what's really intriguing, this couples up with what Alex Crooks said earlier today, that Man United's 50 million euro bid hasn't been rejected by Ajax, as reported yesterday by the Dutch press. They're just stalling on it. And what they're waiting for is to see whether Arsenal come in and match it or go a level higher. They're hoping Arsenal say there's 52, there's 55. And then essentially a bidding war, as you would see in an auction room. You know, bit of David Dickinson. Right? Is it? No, it's not Bruce's prices, right? Real deal, I think it's called, isn't it? Bargain hunt or one of those things. You know what I'm talking about. Do you know what I mean? The guy with the sort of exceedingly good tan, um, honestly. But anyway, I digress. So, look, Man United are, are working on these deals, but one of the big talking points tonight, is, and we'll go back to, will Chelsea be able to pull off Rafinha? Or do Chelsea fans feel they're kind of being used here, maybe a little bit, by the powers that be? Um, I want your thoughts and I want your feelings on that, people. Let's go to some of your live comments that are coming through here. Uh, hey, Frankie, do you remember me? I, 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 I think I get that. I think I get it. Maybe I don't. I, I, I'm not too sure. Alessandro Martinez continues to pressure Ajax to sell him as he wants to play in the Premier League. Absolutely. Of course he does. He wants to be in the Prem. He wants to play for Eric Ten Hag as his priority. He wants to be a Manchester United player. No shadow of a doubt. Take Goldbridge into the boxing ring. I said this the other day. I don't fight anymore. I'm too old and I've got kids. Um, but I wouldn't fight Mark Goldbridge. Two reasons. One, I don't really think he's a fighter. Secondly, he knows policemen. And I don't, I don't mess with people like that. Do you know what I mean? Because I'll get my house raided. There'll be something planted in my house. I'll get arrested. Like, that's what's going to happen. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, we've all, we've all been there. Do you know what I mean? I haven't. I haven't. Uh, Frankie De Jong lost. Yeah, I don't think it's lost. I, I really don't think it's lost. There, there's, I just don't. I just, I, again, these stories have happened two weekends running now. Three weekends ago, it was breakthrough. Two weekends ago, it was breakthrough. It's going to happen. The last two weekends, there's been a big report that he's rejected. I wouldn't even be surprised. And again, I, it's a journalist writing this, and then it's being translated, like lines are being translated into English. I wouldn't be surprised if this is some fairly old news being reiterated again. We've seen that with the Frankie De Jong situation again. It's funny as well, though, because... When I published, when we did a story about three weeks ago, and remember what we do on the terrace, whether you think it's a bad um, source or not, if it's the trending news, we talk about it. But when sports said there'd been a breakthrough and the deal was close, Man United haters were like, nah, rubbish source. Today, they're all laughing that the same source has said that he's rejecting Man United. Make your minds up. When This is the thing. People choose when and what to believe. We did a video earlier. It was like, they're saying an update on the Sandro Martinez. I'm like, there's literally three bits of news we showed on the screen that only came out this morning. How is that not new news? <laughs> I don't get it. This is the uh, this is the maddest thing. Some people want hour by hour, day by day updates, but then don't want hour by hour, day by day updates. They just want to know when it's done. It's like I say it a lot. But you can't. It's, what's, what's the old adage? You know, you, you can't. You can't. You, you can't please all of the people all of the time. I suppose that's what it kind of is. Uh, you have come a one, long way, streaming in train stations, airports, and walking to work. Um, even avoiding your stalker. Congrats on 250k. Thank you, Cedric. Uh, yeah, big up safe wherever you are in the world, my friend. I hope you're doing well. Um, cheers. I appreciate it. Sport claims that Chelsea will beat Man United to De Jong as their offer uh, convinced him much more. Yes, yeah, Sport then also said that he prioritised Man United over them. Now, I know it's different journalists at the same newspaper. I do feel that. Like, I can understand. If you get, like, the Guardian and the Athletic, right, stories that clash, that makes sense. I do feel that if you're the editor of the sports section of a newspaper or the editor of a sports paper, there should have to be a level of continuity in your stories. Like if you've got two journalists in your office and they're both telling different stories, I'll be sitting them down together saying, hang on a minute. <laughs> the readers are going to get very confused here. What is the story? Do you get where I'm coming from? Like, yeah, it it's an interesting one for me. It really, really is. Uh, TFT has been an awesome distraction from everyday stuff. 
Appreciate it. Thank you very much, Chris. I appreciate the kind words. It's good distraction for me as well. I always enjoy it. It's very cathartic. And, 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 and I get to center myself a lot, which is good, especially after Man United are bad. And we're bad. We've been bad a lot in the last nine years since I've been in this game. What I'd really love is to be a YouTuber when Man United are good. I, I haven't experienced that. I've had like fits and starts. We won a few trophies, but never when we've been good. I'd love it. I'd love it because I don't depend upon negativity to grow. That's why I'm, that's why I love it. Does that make sense? Like, I know there are some United fans. There's probably, there's, you probably get content creators in every fan base. It's like, I hope we don't become good because I'm fucked. <laughs> no one listens to me when I'm happy. There must be some that sit there and secretly think, ah, oh, this is not good news. You know, same for Liverpool like, content creators. I bet there's a few of them in their heart of hearts are like, I love being good. But business-wise, it'd be a lot better if we were crap again. I know there must be some that sit there and secretly think that. 100%. Uh, Sully here says, at this point, it's like forcing a girl to be with you. Let it go. De Jong isn't the only midfielder available. And listen, I don't think it's about forcing De Jong. You've got to, again, if you read the body of work that's out there, the vast majority haven't said he doesn't want to play for Man United or he's rejected Man United. They've said where his priority is. But as we've already stated, the only way he can stay there is to reduce his salary. Otherwise, it's going to be a, a, a horrible relationship, a, a, a not a good place to work and, and play football. Then he'll be forced to leave. After him being forced to leave, what's the options? Join another club or retire? <laughs> what is he not going to play football. It doesn't make sense to completely walk away. However, maybe in a week, two weeks time, Man United then need to start really thinking about moving on towards other targets because you are getting close to the season starting and the window going down to its last, you know, four or five weeks. So I, I totally get where you're coming from. But just like with just like with Chelsea, you know, it was only a few days ago, people were saying, we look at this Rafinha deal. People were saying, pull away, walk away. Doesn't want us 100%. Doesn't want us more than Barca. Let's walk away. Stupid. It's a very stupid logic. If you listen to what Nick has said tonight, Again, very credible journalist, not someone that tweets about football trends. Do you know, I, tr I trust journalists that seldom tweet about football transfers because clearly it's the, it's not their game, right? There's a lot of journalists who depend upon transfers to make a living. A lot don't. This guy doesn't. Rafinha's starting to get frustrated is the news. Now, Barca might sort this all out and then there's no problem. But this is the fluidity of the market. Let's just say this drags on for another two or three days and Rafinha says, you know what? You ain't serious about me. Chelsea are. The mind can be changed. Then the player's number one destination could become Chelsea. But imagine you pull away, cut any nose to spite your face. If Chelsea would have done that, this is, I'll give you an example here, Chelsea fans. You kids won't remember it. And transfer stories were never detailed to us as they are now on socials. One, because social media didn't exist. If Chelsea walked away from a signing that didn't want to, to be their first point of call, William, who was very good for you at times, wouldn't have signed for you. Ian Robin wouldn't have signed for you. And the most famous example would be Mikel, one of your best midfielders in the Premier era, wouldn't have signed for you. Those three, and there's probably countless other examples of players that if you go back and read the stories throughout that summer that they joined you, were linked to other clubs. Or I, I wonder if Drogba would have been offered another club instead of Chelsea, like Barcelona came in or Real Madrid came in, whether he'd have been more, he fancied them more. This is normal. I think Chelsea, but nah, if, unless you want us 100%, you got, we, we don't want you. It's 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 a it's a it's a warped train of thought that, that rhymes, you know. Look at that. I think it's a warped train of thought. Uh, myself, uh, Pav here with member chats and 250k. Thank you, my friend Josh Waring, one of our longest standing members. Both him and Pav, 29 and 28 months respectively. Thank you, guys. Says so big up yourself, Terry. A uh, congrats on the the entire TFT family. Road to 300k starts now. Love that. I'd love to hit 300k by the end of 2022. That'd be nice. Also, we are going to have a proper party for this. So on the don't know the date, KJJ. I think the 30th of July. We're meeting up in 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 London. Uh, we'll we'll send a bit of an open invite invite out to members and people like that. And uh, we're going to be out and just having some drink. No streaming. I don't want cameras in my face either. By the way, <laughs> we, did, we did. I did something like once, and some like, members came. Some guy was chatting to me and just kept them putting. He was recording me the whole time. I was like, "Please, don't just put the phone down of the chat. Like, I don't need the phone in my face." One, it's weird. Two, I'm not a celebrity. Like, don't don't get starstruck. I'm just me. Same guy. I laugh the same as well. It's funny actually. My mum sent me a video the other day of my, my brother's birthday, and she was um, with him, and he was dancing like a tit, and she was laughing. And I really should put the video on the internet because if you listen to my mum's laugh. Anyone that ever accuses my laugh of being fake and like put on for show 
is debunked forever. I didn't even really think about it. Like my 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 laugh is like identical to my mother's. So um, I love that. But there we go. Uh, Daniel here says a uh, 250k. Congratulations. No one deserves it more. This channel helped me through the hard times. Thank you, legend. Daniel, I appreciate that, my guy. And you know, I remember you saying that back then. Thank you. Uh, I want to thank my goat, Cristiano Ronaldo's hair transplant company. Uh, let's have hope. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Here we go, Sterling. And what do you mean, here we go, Sterling? We don't need a here we go, Sterling. Terry Flewers did that this morning. Terry Flewers did that. This, in fact, no, I did it a week ago. This deal's been done. This deal's been done. Um, but there we go. Um, you know, tap in over there. A week late. A week late, and he. A week late. Imagine being a week late. No, I mean, joking, Fabs. Love you. <laughs> but we knew it was done. Terry knew it was done. I knew it was done. Um, no, he didn't tap in. It's just, it just is what it is. <clears throat> I told everybody. Again, in fairness to that one, the reason why, uh, the reason why I know that that's done <laughs> is because I, I can't. Even, one day I'll better reveal why. I actually don't really. I actually can't understand why. Um, no one's gathered how I know yet. It, it wouldn't take probably more. And I'm not going to say any more than that. I'm not going to mention anyone's names. It should take you less than like half an hour of research on the internet to understand how I would know. Like legitimately less than half an hour. Half an hour of work. And you'd be like, oh my God, that's why. It would make complete sense. It really, really would. Um, but there we there we go. Uh, it is what it is. Um, yeah. There we go. A uh, super chat here. Congrats on the 250k, Terry and uh, Terry and Co. You guys provide some of the best content on this platform. Best of luck. Thank you, Joshua. I really do appreciate that, my friend. Thank you, thank you, and thank you again. Um, let's bring the boys out now. Neeks and Tom are backstage, uh, ready to come on and have their say uh, on the show tonight. Remember, two thousand likes. I'm going to gift out fifty free squad membership levels tonight to you but we need to hit the 2000 likes so all of you watching got a like share the stream get people you know to join the stream gotta get the numbers up get the likes up and we'll give you out that prize terry is your wife latina no no um i don't have a wife to be honest um that's not actually strictly true <laughs> i told you <laughs> <laughs> I'm not actually my actual wife. Um, if I've got the paperwork over there. I've just got to sign it to be divorced. <laughs> I just haven't signed it. I'm so bad at paperwork. I actually messaged it the other day saying I will get it done. I promise. Like but that's my wife. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to go into my my, my love life. But <laughs> no, no Latinas. Um, no, <laughs> that's what I'm going to say. I don't know what else to say. Uh, 250k subs. Congratulations. I love the fact that you allow rivals to call in and have their say. Of course. I, I don't like the fact that YouTube, other YouTube channels don't. I think, where's the fun in that? Come on and challenge. You know what I mean? Have your say. Uh, it's not too personal. No, it's, I'm, I'm quite open to speak about it. Like, I'm not worried I got the ball. I mean, I initiated it. I left. <laughs> no, I don't feel like I'm not the, you know, like I don't watch Love Island, but I get the feeling because I kind of watch what people say. Like you can be purred up with a lady or a man, but there comes a point where you can like sack one off and move to another one. Right. That's me. No, I'm joking. I didn't do that. It wasn't like that. I didn't just do that. But um, Terry, is your wife human? My ex-wife. Yeah, she's definitely a human being. Um, <laughs> there we go. Uh, Neeks and Tom uh, joining me now on the show to have their say. Um, smash the like and share button, people. Let's do this. Neeks is here. Tom's here. How you doing, boys? All good. All good. Oh. Congratulations. Oh, I appreciate it, gents. Pre appreciate it, gents. I think I might have a little. Uh... Well, you know about this. You don't know about this, Terry. You don't know about this. That's, that looks like some nice rum, though, bruv. That looks like He's some nice so rum. Kingston 62 made by Appleton. You might well Appleton that's a big um that's a big rum like company in Jamaica. And this is a new it's a new batch since 2020. I drank it into is it 20 I think it was 2020 or 2021. And I was like, I've had this before. This is the same as their other stuff. They just rebranded it 
And for yeah, we put Kingston in front of it, and everyone's gonna be like, "Yeah, I'll get it," because it's a new, it's the same, the same rum. <laughs> it's not good. But I'll have some of that for the football terrace. Appreciate that, my guy. Um, <laughs> uh, Terry left his wife. Lucky's hairline left him. It's, it's not that deep. I mean. Ain't that deep? It ain't that deep? It ain't that deep? It's all good. It's all good. But no, she wasn't Latina. Um, I've got, I've got a bit of. I might have a little shot out. You know, you boys are here. I want to pour a little shot out and just. Oh, right, little shot on the air. No shots for you, young Tom. Light hours, <laughs> light hours, light hours for you only. None of the strong stuff. You can stick to the um, what, five, five percent beer lager. Oh, <laughs> four point four point eight. His mum said is the maximum she'll allow him to drink. Jesus <laughs> <laughs> No. Everyone- no more allowed. Everyone in the comments is saying, um, here we go, Sterling. But Ornstein tweeted it before Fab. Mm-hmm. And there's actually a discrepancy in what they're both tweeting. So Ornstein first tweeted 50 million, then Fab tweeted 45 plus 10 add ons. And then Ornstein tweeted, no, 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 it's just, well, he didn't reply to Fab, but he replied to himself saying 47.5 million fixed, no add ons. So I'm sure they both see each other's tweets. And I'm sure Ornstein thought, I'm gonna make them know that whatever Fab saying ain't right. It's it's forty seven and a half, no add ons. I mean, who knows? I believe Ornstein in it. Ornstein does. Ornstein's one of those people that it's like he only tweets yeah. when it's when it's like when it's confirmed, mm-hmm. when it's one hundred percent legit. There's no, it's not like an agent told him or a um, you know, a club said this. It's literally confirmed. Well, so I will I go think, with forty-seven. Well, I said that to, I said that to KJ this summer when he started tweeting just about Man United's involvement in in Ericsson, Said we're getting him. Yeah. If Ornstein tonight was the term, that's why I be, that's why also I believe categorically this the, the deal for De Jong, all the noise surrounding it surrounding it, United have a very good chance of getting him between him and Laurie Whitwell. Essentially, the story is negotiations going on there's positive talks and personal terms shouldn't be problematic like across the two that's why the athletic and those two when it comes to transfers they don't obviously we're we're a youtube channel we we talk about the speculations yeah. people think but they, yeah, they, they don't speculate, they, don't they, speculate. They, 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 just, they just go in that and that's why sometimes it's almost a case of like i go back two years and those individuals were talking about sancho and they were saying we really don't think it's going to happen now yeah. I was ignoring that to a degree back then as a fan. Oh, we still still might be. But but you uh, you but this is the point. You learn over the course of time who's credible, who isn't. Mm -hmm. When certain people say certain things, you know, once Paul Joyce starts talking about Liverpool and a player, you know it's over, it's happening, it's done. And you have to learn to read. It's like the listen, the transfer window, if you actually study it hard enough, you don't have to know a single player, agent, or club, and you can sit there reading the news and and predict what's gonna happen because Mm -hmm. What certain people say or do, you know, there's certain journalists who just literally say things. It's interesting because, like, all my green ticks, I'll say open on the air. I only green tick something once a, a group of at least three people have mentioned it as in it's being credible. No matter what I've heard before or what I've heard after, until one of them says, and then I'm like, cool, I'm cool. And what's, what that's helped me to do is there's two young journalists that we're going to start having on the, the, the terrace. And one's called Jack Tolbert, and the other guy is called uh, Fraser Fletcher. These two are going to be absolute superstars in terms of the transfer world, and they are like they are like hundred and ten percent legit. But I held back from like sharing certain things three or four weeks ago because I was like, I don't know them. Like I don't, I don't want to put things out there. But everything they have said has been like ridiculously accurate to, to the T. And they're not, and they're not, and they're using their own names, they're using their own faces. They're going to start coming on camera. It's like you know that that's the problem with a lot of the in the know people. A lot of them DM me all the time. Oh, I would like to share your stuff. If you share ours, I'm like, can we have a FaceTime then so I can see your face? Like, I need to know who you are. Mm-hmm. If I knew, if you didn't want to reveal yourself, but I knew who you were, I'd, I'd share. It's just that I don't know who you are, mate. And I think all those, you know, you get a lot of those accounts that they've got like their real names, but like none of their picture. I think they're all the same person. <laughs> I think they're all the same person pushing stuff mm-hmm. out. But yeah, I wanted to ask you guys about the Rafinha deal, actually, because obviously the talk tonight is Rafinha's getting frustrated, Leeds are getting frustrated. And in fact, Barca are annoying everybody. Like, do you think it could fall through for Barcelona, especially if Dembele does sign this new deal? Because most sources have said they won't get both. So if he renews, I, I, where, where, where's your guy's head at with that deal? It's, it's an interesting one because obviously he's he's agreed he's actually agreed to deal with Barcelona, but it's waiting to be signed off by the hierarchy, and I guess I guess their 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 reasoning for delaying it is let's see if we can agree a deal a deal with uh, Leeds, and it, but it might be a case of 
a great deal of lease to see how much money we got left, i.e. how much we, have, we how much we actually have to pay up front, or a great deal of lease, and then we don't have to get them better. I think they would want to keep both, but our Barca don't want to lose many of their players this summer. It's just the fact that they have to get rid of them, but like they're forced. They, they, you know, they, they want Frankie De Jong to take a pay cut. They want, obviously, uh, Lengley's gone on loan. And Titi was supposed to be going. I think that deal's been cancelled. But they, 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 they're forced to reduce the wage bill as opposed to wanting to get rid of certain players. Dembele, they want to keep. And I think if they can agree a structure of the deal with Leeds that allows them to keep Dembele, I think they'll do both. I don't think it's as simple as one or the other. But if Leeds are going to say, well, Chelsea are offering us, I don't know, 55 million up front, and you're only offering us... <clears throat> 25 million, 30 million. And on top of that, we don't even know if you can pay the rest. Because that's the problem. I think they've got they've got old uh, salary to, there's a few clubs. Is Bayern Munich one of them? Is, for, is it Vidal? Vidal, I think they own money for Vidal. Like, so yeah. every club's looking at it like, like we don't, we can't do installments with you. That's, that's the thing with the Lewandowski deal, Bayern isn't it? Munich, well, yeah, Bayern Munich want catch up front for Lewandowski because they can't trust. So it's about, I think, if Leeds can, um, if Leeds allow Barca to, pay you know a little bit up front and then installments and maybe some add-ons then i think they they could keep both but the ball's probably more in Leeds court than anyone else at this point yeah. because Leeds that deal affects barca barca's deal affects man united man united affects chelsea like Leeds, like yeah. well, it's, well it's like you guys were saying like you look at the situation with de Jong and it's almost so like the way they deferred his wages is he's obviously like taken lower and this year it's meant to increase so he's earning like 19 plus million a year and I think in his own head, it's sort of like, well, if I leave, though, I want my backdated money because mm -hmm. I'm meant to be getting it now. And you're trying. And this is the thing. This is why I'm not worried about the deal from a player point of view. Of course, this deal might not happen if Barca in the end go, right, we just won't sell because we don't want to give him his money. It's almost like, man, this is the weirdest thing. I've asked Man United to behave like this in the market. Don't overpay. But it's almost like Barca, like, well, we need you to overpay because we need to give him his deferred wages. So it's like, that's what's holding it up. But at the same time, there is a part of me that's like, I'd rather not get the player than bend over again and, and take it. 100%. Yeah, right. I was like, oh, you said it could happen. You said it might happen. Yeah, it is close. It's really close. Because right now, the, tonight, if Barca and Man United agree on a price, De Jong becomes a Man United player. I have no shadow of a doubt in my mind about that. But Barca are annoying a lot of people. And I, I, that's why I've been saying for days, Chelsea fans telling their club to walk away. Get, get rid of the emotion thinking that oh, every player you've ever signed before this was desperate for Chelsea over anybody else. It doesn't work like that. Darwin Nunes, 110% would have joined Man United this summer if Liverpool didn't come in for him. And if yeah. Man United were better, challenging the titles, it would have been a real battle. The fact that Liverpool still bought in, though, even though he was talking to Man United before they got involved, because you wanted him. It's, it's crazy. Uh, C here says, Barca out here uh, finessing the market. Dub EBT cards and scratch off tickets. Oh, like, oh, right, well, lottery cards, uh, scratch off tickets. These boys moving crazy. It, it's mental. Barca are it. mental. I, I don't get where, I don't get this idea that Barca have as a football club. They owe Gerard PK tens, if not hundreds of millions. Sergio Busquets is owed money. They're selling off, they've sold off the stadium name rights, which was I never expected them to do. It's now called the Spotify Camp Nou. You've got Real Madrid fans cancelling the subscription to stop funding the Rafinha transfer. You can get married on the Camp Nou pitch, and yet they're sat there going, yeah, we'll spend 200 mil this summer. In what world? In what I don't get it. They, well, they think they just have infinite money. It's well, ridiculous. look at this. This is from Marsa. They're talking about via the Athletics. It's actually from the Athletic, saying that Barca have got 31 registered players right now, and it's 560 million euros of wages they want to get that down to 400 million and this is the point i was saying to people about de jong exactly, yeah. they, they 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 want to get rid of de jong and i don't think it's predominantly about how he plays it's almost a case of but if we keep him it's such a dent we've got pedri we've got kese we've got um gavi yeah. and they want to keep gavi and pedri for obvious reasons it's almost they've got to move him on but of course de jong's being sensible i've said it all summer of course he's not going to say he wants to leave of course he's not going to try and force a move away one he wants to guarantee his money Two, Man United and Barca may not come to a full total agreement and then he stays. Imagine he spends two months saying how much he wants to get away from here, how badly they're treating him, how horrible it is, and then he ends up staying. He's got to face that crowd. We know what they can be like. He's doing the right thing. But yeah, Barca are absolutely... Do you know Barca... Well, are you know, Go on. They, they announced Christiansen and Kese. They haven't actually registered them, have they? No, they, they've just announced them. 
Even though they're they're a nice little edit for Christensen in the Barca kit, which he's not actually allowed to wear yet. Like, <laughs> I, I don't get it. The thing, when you look at their wages as well, like, they've got... I don't think Atletico bought Griezmann. I don't think they took up their option. So, I'm pretty sure they've got Griezmann back, who's on, mm. like, near 400k a week. Dembele right now was... Well, he was on 375. He's going down to, what, 150? But just look at look at some of the wages in that club, and it's not surprising that they end up in that situation. I mean, Bayern, like we said before, they they want cash up front for Lewandowski if they're going to sell them. They want that fifty million now, although because they don't reckon Barca will be a club in two years. I don't Do get you know, how they you know, survived so long. You know, I mean, I don't know the de- the details of. I haven't read about the details of of them selling off their their TV rights. But where this all goes mad and crazy is. If suddenly, like in the next two years, I think they sold the rights for like decades. It's like decades worth of years they've sold. Oh, 20, for. 25 years. They've so agreed to sell 25% of their TV rights for 25 years. And this is where like the problems then can come in, though. It, although it's a solution for now, that could be a long term issue. Let's just say, for instance, let's just say, for instance, a new streaming company or, or or whatever else comes into La Liga or uh, approaches La Liga. I know, they, I know they, 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 they do their negotiations individually, but wants to put billions in, billions in. And suddenly Real Madrid, everyone's getting, say Real Madrid and Barca are both going to get 500 million a year. It's like ridiculous levels, but they're going to lose 25% of it. Real Madrid are going to get all that money. Like this is still something that could damage them, not from other La Liga clubs, but on a European level, they still might end up down in, in a few years' time because as more money comes in, they're always losing 25% of it. So when they go toe-to-toe with Real Madrid, let's say they both get 400 million each in, in a new massive TV deal because Amazon Prime want to sponsor it and they want to pump billions in. Let's just say they they, they do. Amazon Prime are buying it. They're going to lose 25% of that to the company they've sold it off to. Real Madrid won't. That's going to cause them. And then when if La Liga ever got that kind of injection of cash, suddenly the, the price goes up for all players that the, 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 the league clubs want to buy. We've seen it with the Prem. You know, look how cheaply Bayern Munich got Glavin back. There's no way a Premier League club gets in that cheaply. Easily double the price for the Premier League because they want our TV deal money. So I still even think with the solutions Barca are putting in place, there is a potential sting in the towel later with it. And what they're probably better off doing is not being as good for a period of time and naturally fu- fixing their financial situations. Does that make, Rather than trying to almost like artificially change it now and fix it, I just don't know. If I was a Barca fan, I'd I mean, be worried. The other option, if I'm correct, um, La Liga were proposing is it the CVC deal or something like that, where uh, they sell, I think it's like 50%. No, 50%? No, 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 not 50%. They sell part of it for 50 years. And that would basically, if you agree to that, all everything's fine. Carry on as you're doing because you've agreed to La Liga's uh, new TV deal. But because they want to keep Obviously, uh, it's separate and keep it as they can negotiate it on TV deals, um, or at least a percentage of it. Then, yeah, they're they're struggling, and the league is like, well, you know what? Um, yeah, well, you got, you got to get yourself out of this mire. We're not going to help the, you. The most mental part of Barca in recent years has been, for me anyway, when them La Liga clubs all banded together and said we'll try and help pay Messi's wages so he stays. Like, could you imagine that in the Prem? Yeah, it's, it's. I mean, even with Messi, I know how good a player he was, but weren't he on like a million pound a week or something? Yep, at least, at least. And, and that's just stupid money. Because as good as he was, that deal and Griezmann was it like seven hundred thousand pound a week? The, yeah. the money they were paying, and this is the thing: people, people will turn around and say, "Biggest club in in the world, they can attract anyone." If Man United ten years ago would have offered Messi a million pound a week, he'd have come here. Like no one's turning down a million pound a week. Like if Barca, I know in the end he couldn't stay for free because he uh, the, the, the rules wouldn't allow Barca to be able to do it. But all footballers move for money, and what I mean by that is this: even the likes of Giggs and Skulls and Gary Neville, whenever taking their like one year renewals at the back end of their career, they didn't play for free and go, oh, "Save the money, guys." This, you know, this whatever you're going to pay us. Let's let all the, the longest standing season ticket holders come in for free. They still got their money. They want their money. Footballers always want their money, right? And Barca just went too far with it to try and land everybody, and it's really caught them up bad. It's 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 painful. Uh, to hear says, uh, congrats uh, on uh, bro, two hundred fifty k, best content creator with the funniest laugh. Um, I definitely have the funniest laugh. Uh, best content creator, yeah, I, I beg to differ. But if you think I am, then thank you. It's your choice, and you you can't be wrong. I suppose it's just an opinion. But uh, there we go. But uh, <laughs> it is 
it is what it is. Right, we're closing in, people, on a thousand likes. We need to get to two thousand to give away these fifty free memberships. You should be well past two thousand by now, people. Get that done. Get it smashed uh, as it stands. Um, I haven't really spoke to you boys much about this in the last couple of weeks. Obviously, there's the news that's kind of going around about the manager sort of pushing really hard to bring in Lissandro Martinez and Anthony. Are you boys confident Man United will be able to get those two deals done? Uh, not the Anthony one. The Anthony one is is, is it's too expensive. Um, and I just read a report, actually, <clears throat> uh, from, who is it, Duncan Castle's Times. Says Ericsson Hag has also returned to Ajax to reinforce his Man United coaching staff, hiring the performance analyst Kevin Kiech or something like that. Um, Ajax ain't going to be happy with all of this poaching. And I think that's going to have an impact on the price they set for the players that we want to buy. Now, I'm not saying they're going to short change themselves in other deals, but especially once you've got the Premier League tax, you've got the Man United tax, and I think. There might be a few disgruntled people thinking you can't take everyone. Like this is ridiculous now, Ten Hag. You're gonna. I, mean, I was reading something that was saying that maybe he might ruin his own legacy at Ajax by poaching all the players that he actually allowed. You know, made the club into um, competitive in the last few years. That Anthony deal. I know. I think I just read sixty million on the screen. I'm what we heard were more seventy million. And, and I always say he hasn't. Listen, it's the. Uh, it's the it's the Dutch league. He hasn't done anything. He hasn't done anything. Like that's it. I don't. I'm not, I'm not saying he's not good. I'm not saying he's not talented. But he hasn't proved anything. So why are we? Why would we pay 50, 60 million pounds for him? It it doesn't make sense. I get it. We might need someone to you know to fill in. Um, especially for now, goals. We need another attacker. Blah blah. blah. Mm. But is he that good that you have to pay 55, 60 million? For someone who's proved nothing other than in the Dutch league, I, I'm not sure about that. There must be other, other wingers out there. It has to be. Yeah, what are you saying, Tom? Do you feel like... I mean, I get your point, by the way, Nick. I think the yeah, Ajax are going to get to a point soon where it's like, Jesus Christ. Even, like, we're linked to this Brobby guy. I mean, that's one of their targets. We, we took... Like, Malassi was one of their targets. We've kind of taken away. Um, so the, there is an element of needing to be kind of careful. But equally, I suppose... Ten Hag, Tom, looks at it from a point of view of, I, I get I don't want to damage my legacy at Ajax, but I'll be a much more famous and recognisable manager if I create a proper legacy at Man United. In in 2022, mm-hmm. Man United winning league titles and Champions Leagues again is, is much bigger in, in the world of football than Ajax winning league titles, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, he's just got to look out for himself. He's no longer Ajax manager. He can, he can have affection for the club, but he's got to look out for himself. So getting in players who know his style of play and he's comfortable with his, is his priority. It's on Ajax, really. I mean, I remember when we took Brendan Rodgers from Swansea and they put in a clause in that deal saying we could only take at most one or two Swansea players. That was why we only had Joe Allen join us. But, like, I, I, don't, I don't see the Anthony one happening. Really not for that price. I, I I just see he's waiting until next summer to go out and buy a striker. I think he's got plans for that right wing spot with Sancho. But I think the, I think the Martinez deal happens... I think the Martinez deal, it, there's just been too much said about it for it not to happen at this point. And mm. you so need the centre back. Uh, it, it just seems like the perfect transfer to get done. What's that Robbie one? It's a bit of a mad one, isn't it? I, I, yeah, I don't yeah, know yeah. where that's come from, but I you just want him now. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think where it's come from, I mean, someone put this theory in, and I like, I love a fan theory. They said, well, maybe United are just looking like they're going to hijack it and then we'll use it as a, well, we'll. Because he's this is the thing, he's quite cheap in the grand scheme of football nowadays. We'll walk away if you just accept this goddamn bid, <laughs> if that makes it like that's. I mean, when you've I've watched films, one of the best films I've ever watched about transfers was Draft Day with Kevin Costner. Um, it, honestly, one of the best, it's honestly that nothing really happens in the film that's dramatic, it's just how they approach Draft Day in the NFL. And those kind of deals happen in America where it's like, well, we'll let you get this guy and do this, but you've got to give a saying back. And it isn't always like player for player directly. So maybe there's something in there. I've had a message come through from Abdul that's a, a Barca fan. He said, so much waffle on your show, it's crazy. Why talk about something that you know nothing about? He asked me a question, a question mark. I did say that I haven't read anything about this, but I was putting out a thought. Um, but he says, just spreading misinformation. It's an opinion. I wasn't saying it was a fact. But he says the first thing Barca did before selling 25%, uh, by the way, which only accounts for 8% of their total revenue, which is fine. 
that's not that wasn't my point. He says, um, is they added a buyback clause that would be triggered if the TV rights grew by five to seven percent within the given period, and that's cool. But what is the buyback price? Would they have the money at that time to actually trigger the buyback price ahead of time? There's loads of, again, these things are never, those, these level of deals are never basic and binary. There will be so many stipulations and none of us will know the intricate details of it. My point is just this, when you're in a financial mess and it appears that you are scrambling about trying to do whatever you can to fix it in the short term, that can often cause problems in the longer term. How do I know that? I work for one of the biggest banks in the world who had billions of pounds being hemorrhaged a year out of the organization because of legacy mistakes. And nearly every step of the way, and all this happened, by the way, before I even joined the bank, every time they tried to fix a problem, they just threw a quick, easy solution at it. And in the longer term, it always came back to bite them in the backside. I'm just stating that I think Barca should slow their spending down with, with or without selling their TV rights for a period, really level up their finances, be in a strong, organic position, and then start to move again. That's my view. And I don't care about not having all the information. That's what I think they should do based on my experience in the financial world. And I've seen a lot of businesses crumble and fall through panicked, um, quick fixes. That's, that's my point, my friend. But equally, it's just three guys spitballing, having a bit of a chat. It's not misinformation. We're not talking about climate change or rigged elections. It's just calm down, Abdul. Let's, let's, let's keep it 100. Barca fans are very, very salty. Uh, Real Madrid are clear of them by eight La Liga titles. Um, they they haven't won La Liga since 2019, so we're talking four years now. They ain't won the Champions League since 2015, so we're talking eight years. Uh, well, seven years, eight years next season. We know they're not going to win it. Uh, we can't even buy players at the moment. Real Madrid just won their 14th Champions League. Yeah, no and, and you're and, and you're you're losing all your players and you're in debt to most of them. Like you're salty and you're deluded. You played Europa League football last season and got knocked out to Eintracht Fran Frankfurt. That's the reality. Bars, I've spoken to a lot of Bars all the time on, on um HH's channel, for example. And they're just they're in a position, I guess, maybe where Man United were post Fergie, where we thought, ah, we'll get out of this very soon. We can't. You're not going anywhere. Real Madrid own Spain and they own Europe. You've got nowhere to go. You've got nowhere to the, go. The <laughs> thing is, you went on there about that TV deal and how they sold it and how it's it's a ju- there's all the positives. We've got a buyback clause. If it was that simple, surely Real Madrid and Atletico Madrid would be doing it as well. So you know, because it it just sounds so much better. You make money now. You can just buy it back later when it grows. Where's the downsides? Yeah, uh, I don't see the point of the buyback clause because they can't afford it. I want some. I want some. I'm gonna ask some questions about this buyback clause. Increasing revenue from whom? So again, if it's the same TV company, so say it's Sky, their version, of whoever does it, their Sky over there. If Sky increase it, then cool. But what if it's bought by a streaming service? Like, and what I mean by that is, is that these things happen. Like when you read contracts, in, in, my brother was going to buy a business about two years ago. Like, a, 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 he was going to buy a. A, a plumbing and a gas engineering business. And he's like, oh, it's really good to tell. Look at the turnover. He's selling it for this. And I said, let's review all the money that this business made. Like 80% of its revenue came from its contracts it had with local authorities. And I said, get those contracts. This guy didn't want to give these contracts up. He said, get the contracts. I'm not a lawyer, but I said, just get the contracts. Eventually he gave them to us. And within like a minute of me reading them, I said, look, look, look what they all say. Basically, if the, if the, if the ownership of the business changes, all all these contracts be open for re-tendering, which means anybody can bid for them. So essentially, you could spend 300 grand buying this business and then all the um, contracts had get re-tendered and you lose 90% of them. Suddenly, the business is shit. So I said, you don't buy it. You, you can't. It isn't the business. It isn't worth the money they're trying to sell it for because they're subject to lose all that income. And I know that's a completely different example, but it's how I'm just saying I would love to see the intricate detail of the contract before I give an opinion. My point is this, though. What I know for a fact you man are broke buying players out of Littlewood magazines. You guys are saying, "Oh, can we can we buy Rafinha but start paying next year?" Like, what is this? 
<laughs> buy now, pay later. Listen, I grew up, I, I grew up poor, dirt poor in a council estate. That's how we bought things. You get the new trainers, you bowl into school. Don't ruin them, Terry, because we're paying them for a year. Like a year, your mum and dad are paying them trainers off for. That's how we lived. Do you know what I mean? If I came home after like a week, and the, you know the, the bit that they stick on the front, if it was coming off, my dad used to go mental. Honestly, be right, you ain't get new ones. I, I, many times I super glued them up. It was mad, bruv. Do you know what I mean? And it stuck better after that. Anyway, uh, okay. why are players so desperate to play for Barca at this time? I understand they are football heavyweights, but they are in the right mud right now. Players aren't even sure if they will be getting paid. I don't. The players are um, secured um, creditors to a degree, so they would be owed that money, and they'd be guaran or debtors. One of the two. My brain's gone. They would be guaranteed that money, so they'd be one of. Say the club went into liquidation they would be like the first people paid up, like, if that makes sense. So financially, I think they'd get themselves secured. But being part of Barca and the resurgence is obviously a big attraction, and, and they're massive, so I, I would say that. That's not quite £10, but it's nearly £10, so I'm going to do another shot. Thank you very much. In honor of Any super chats over 10 quid. I'm doing shots live on the air tonight, people. That's what I'm going to do. So if you want to see Drunk Terry live, keep doing it. Ooh, second one now. I'm going to keep it what? Barca, Barca fans, Barca fans, you're not the biggest club in the world. You're barely the biggest club in Catalonia, let alone Spain. Like, relax. Yeah, Man United in the mud. I can still say what the facts are. And the facts are, you're not the biggest club in, 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 in Spain. And you haven't been the best club in Europe for a while now. So, yeah, just, uh, just, just hold it, just hold it. I hear you on that. My guy, Um, we're going to put a post on the community page with KJ's email address on you. Email KJ and he'll uh, he'll send you that the uh, Football Terrace scarves out. You'll have them in time now for winter. <laughs> they took so long, honestly, that we went to this company and they got like, they had two, this, this, they couldn't, you could, I couldn't believe this. One company, like they went bankrupt halfway through making them. They actually gave us their money back in the end. It took months to sort out. Next company, boom, designed them, started making them. And the place that basically makes them is in Ukraine. So he was like, yeah, we, we're not going to be able to get him out. It was like, ah, uh, obviously, like, there's more important things to worry about than me getting scarves. So he had to find, like, another manufacturer. So that took months. But, yeah, we're there in the end. There we go. Congratulations, Terry. I love your show. A fan from Brazil. From Brazil. You're the first person ever that's from Brazil that's mentioned they're from Brazil watching the show. So uh, thank you. Me, me. I'm from Brazil. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Neeks. Neeks is <laughs> The, uh, the British Jamaican Brazilian. Yes, yeah, sorry. I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I love your show. Uh, uh, I like the way you explain to people the negotiations. Not a problem, my friend. That, that Not everybody likes that, but thank you for liking it. I appreciate it. I nearly tweeted a gal the other day. I think he put a picture of a flag for like a country that's independent, obviously where, where he thinks he's orange is from. And I didn't because, you know, some people online could take it the wrong way. But I was like, what's this, bruv? You're French. Like, I just felt like saying, you're French, though. Like, I see you supporting football. Like, what are you talking about? Like, that's my view, though, in life. Like, whoever you choose to support in football, generally speaking, I'm like, that's the country. That's your country. That's how I, like, view people's nationality. Like, you could be born in Jamaica, but moved to England when you were 10. If you're playing football for England, you're English. That's how I view the world. I guess I'm, I guess I'm Australian tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> mate, I want Kyria. I want him to win. Like, I like, I like Novak for a lot of reasons. I, I like, like all those him. guys, but I want, I want Kyrgios to win just because it. And I, do you know, what I wanted to do. I want him to win, but like, I wanted to come out in a black t-shirt or something. Don't even wear white. <laughs> I want you to do something that's gonna like, have a black one over, over it, and like just before you're ready to play, go and pull it off. Like I, I don't know. I, I don't see, I, I do think he's a little bit too mentally frail, if that makes sense, he, he, against Djokovic. But I hope he doesn't. If he, if Kyrgios could stay 100% concentrated for five sets, he's got the ability to beat anyone. Yeah. He really well, has. I, think, I, think, I don't, if I'm correct, I think I've read that Djokovic has never beaten him. Oh. I, don't, I, don't, I don't think they've ever played like a grand slam, but I don't think, I don't think that um, they've ever beaten him. And he was the only player in this year's Wimbledon, I believe, who had beaten both Nadal and Djokovic at any point. So he said, if he can focus, then he's got, he's got a chance. He's got a chance. He's definitely got a chance. It's going to be an interesting one indeed. I'll be watching that, no problem. we we'll set TV up in the garden tomorrow. Today was a nice day, wasn't it? Beautiful today. Yeah, Sitting in the garden yeah. with the kids, in and out, in and out the pool, barbecue on. It's a very nice day today. I'm going to do that all. I'm literally going to do that all week this week. I'm just going to, in between streaming, I'm going to sit in my garden, sunbathe, swim in the pool and cook barbecue. Even for, I'm going to cook my breakfast on the barbecue. That's what I'm going to do. I've got these little nice hobs, Tom. So I like, I can, I can like 
I can boil oh, it, yeah. eat up the beans, I can fry my eggs, scramble things. Be nice, be nice. It's gonna be a good week. It's been like I'm on holiday. It's been like watching Lee, Lee Gunner at the minute. It's killing me, I tell you, because we, we were chatting yesterday. Because straight facts of Lee Gunner, people, is back in a few weeks' time. And he's honestly, he is living like the best life. One one or two videos a day, literally 10 minutes each. So he does 20 minutes of work a day, maybe half an hour if, if you throw in like thumbnails. And he just spends the rest of the time by a swimming pool or on a beach or in a restaurant with his missus. I have to say, like, it, it got to a point in terms of content creating where he's making enough money. That's your, imagine that's your life. You do half an hour's work a day and you're basically on holiday 24 hours, like, like 365 days a year it's ridiculous like i'm looking at it thinking like, maybe i made the wrong choice doing all this i should have just done what lee did move to spain <laughs> and just live off the proceeds of youtube it's crazy it's crazy oh what's this saying here uh united fans talking about trophies oh is having a pop at you there nicks because we ain't won one for a while have we <laughs> more, than, more where this came from mate i'm just getting started <laughs> um, been watching you for a while now. Uh, show keeps getting better. Uh, best football channel on YouTube. Time for two shots. Oi, oi! Let's do two shots oi. then, people. Let's do, do the two shots now. I've kept the lid off of this. Let's get the two shots done. You can have a swiggy of beer, young Tom. Let's do it. One. Oh, my lord, my god. I was gonna go out after this. <laughs> I'm not too long came in. I ain't. I was gonna. I was gonna drive and meet some mates. I'm definitely not driving now. Like that's impossible. <laughs> that's impossible. Oh, it's one of them ones. Thank you very much for that super chat, my guy. Really appreciate. Really, I, my throat's burning. Really appreciate that. Thank you. What, what, what's the shots? Welcome. Yeah, just uh, a, a little bit of a uh, grey goose. A little bit of grey goose. Very nice. Very nice. I like grey goose. I don't get hangovers on grey goose. It's it's very purified. Well, Barca yeah. could learn a lot from AC. Sorry, mate. Was that sorry? No, but they stopped selling Russian in the um, shops. So there's another vodka that I drink as well. Um, and it's a JJ Whitley. It's a really nice distilled vodka. Very, very nice. And I didn't see it on the shops, the shelves for like six weeks. It was gone. I was like, oh, where's it gone? Where's it gone? It's like, that's like Grey Goose is, 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 the, is, the, is, the, is the vodka I would drink neat. I won't mix it. It's too nice to mix it with anything. But like this one with JJ Whitley, I think where Whitley was the one I'd mix. Didn't see it for weeks, and then it came back suddenly, fully stocked. And they've changed the label. It now says like um, artisanal vodka, where it used to say Russian vodka. It's obviously got taken down because all their bottles, because yeah. their bottles are like in the glass. So they've obviously had to like mm -hmm. redesign all their bottles and remake all their bottles, and then put the vodka in it. And I'm like. I get it because people like, I mean, me personally, I was like, it, well, you actually read the back. It wasn't even made in Russia. They just I think <laughs> they followed a Russian, the Russian way of making vodka. And okay. I bet I'm like, oh yeah, people are going to hate us for that. There we it's go. Like, it's like, it's like uh, when people stop buying Corona because of coronavirus. Oh, sorry. Can okay, you even say that? <laughs> that, made me, that, made, that made me die. I think you can now because we're, we're, we're living with it, aren't we? Uh, thank you, uh, JW. Another one coming up here. Thank you very much, my old mate. Appreciate that. Mm. <laughs> nice. I've got Westworld to watch later, actually. So, um, what, what about Ciroc? Are you drink that? So, is that right? Ciroc vodka. No, they got a lot no. of different flavors. Like, I literally, oh, I when I used to go on my lad's holiday, we used to get the Ciroc at the um, GE3. So is that the one that. that comes in like a gold bottle? It comes in a lot of different bottles. So, it's, a, lot really, of really yeah. so it's a long, a long bottle, with, uh, and it's got like a small. Uh, yeah, I know the one you. I know the one you mean now. Yeah, I, 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 generally Grey Goose that I was just smearing off if it's their type thing. Yeah, I, I don't. Yeah, yeah and then I and then I like whiskey as well. And whiskey will range to me. Like, I'll buy the. I don't. I anything from like Bell's proper twelve. Like, I don't go for like really expensive whiskey because I have to. I do mix it with stuff. But a few Fridays ago, all the neighbors around here came around and like did a bit of a pool party and a barbecue. And I had like a my decanter full of whiskey on the side, and I was gonna like get that at, at, at serve that later in the evening once we'd all, already a bit cut. And very early on, like me and two guys that lived next door, <laughs> like it was him and his like son in law, and we started drinking it. And I didn't realize his son in law had diabetes, right? <laughs> and after about an hour and a half, this man he nearly knocked my bar over in the garden. He could not stand up. He was finished. He's misses. He's pretty heavily pregnant to come pick him up <laughs> so she she's giving me daggers i was like it's my fault me and me and he's tarving all by then and a few others were all in the pool just laughing because he couldn't stand up and they basically like we had to pull a fence panel out so they could just walk through the fence and go next door because it was like they couldn't like, walk that far and then I, yeah. I did get scared the next day next day 
ambulance pulled up, three paramedics coming in. They're in the house for like an hour and a half of him. I was like, oh, my. you know, the worst thing was I, was, I was fearful of, I was fearful of seeing the private ambulance turn up. I thought, oh my God, if he died. Like, and it wasn't like I was plying him full of drink. He was a grown man. He's making his own decision. But you know, you're like, I don't want it to be because of my pool party. Do you know what I mean? I didn't want no Barry, like, no Barry, Barry, uh, what's it called? A Michael Barrymore situation. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> didn't need any of that. But yeah, it was mad. Uh, Terry turning, sorry, Terry is turning. He's giving drunk chat. Oh, I'm turning, am I? <laughs> Are you guys noticing? I think I'm four or five shots in now. So, yeah, it will hit at some point. It will hit at some point. But oxygen is the thing for me. Sometimes I can sit in here and drink and I'm fine. And then I'll, I'll leave you guys chatting. I'll go and go to the bathroom. I'll go outside from it. And then the air hits me and I'm like, oh, wow. There was one stream back in lockdown where I was pretty drunk on the stream. I went out and did something, came back. And I sat on my chair and I just missed the chair. And I went smash right up on the floor. Uh, I was so bad. I remember Danny. Danny, uh, oh, the only person I know 100% was on there with Danny Devil and the details. I, just... I remember, I remember that stream. Maybe I was watching it, but I remember that stream. I remember, <laughs> I remember that one. Uh, Terry has been talking crap for two months. <laughs> Do you know, do you know, you've been drunk for two months, Terry. Yeah, pretty much. Do you know what? Do you know what I found? What I have found is that whenever I'm positive about Man United. It just gets caught. I keep chatting nonsense. Even like Igal, like Igal was so triggered at me at the that minute. Was so yesterday was so. But I watched it back today this morning. Um, you and Igal, what did what did, what did Igal say? Spin. How you gonna uh, spin it? That was I was in private. But I was even private messaging him yesterday, and it was like, I, I think he's. I think he just. I don't know what it is. He he doesn't. He obviously doesn't believe that I'm positive about these happy, things. Yeah. And it's sort of like, but I am. And I'm, I, and it doesn't mean I think it's all, and this is the crazy thing. Just because I'm positive doesn't mean I think it's all going to work. But I just want to wait and see what happens before I moan and panic. Like, I just am. It's not my money. It isn't like, if it's my business, I'm far more stressed. If it's my money, if it's my livelihood, then I'm stressed. But that, that's not what's, what's going on here. I like the approach. We have to deliver at the back. If we don't deliver, I, I, I still won't feel bad about being positive in the meantime because we tried to do it. But yeah, it, it's one of them things. But equally, like if if, Mar if Martinez happens the early part of next week, we, that means we'd have signed three players, very good players. Like how many has everybody else signed? City are on three. Like yes, Spurs are on five. But I said it earlier. Three of Spurs is I don't want. None of us want. So and they, like we could have got Richarlison like that if we wanted him. If we wanted Perisic, could we have got him? Of course we could. Like do you get where I'm coming from? Like mm -hmm. Liverpool have signed one player and two kids. Chelsea have now signed one player, and Arsenal have signed two. And yet everyone's acting like we're behind. I don't, I don't understand. I, it doesn't make sense. It's all, it's a, fa it's a fallacy. But um, again, people say you just you, sorry. You forgot about Jay Spear, and mate. You forgot you forgot that we signed Jay Spear, and that man made his first appearance for the under twenty three today. That and and my football club rinsed it. There is pictures right now of Jay Spear in, in this season's Liverpool kit, and it's well, terrifying. The DJ Spearing, DJ Spearing that got released from Tramere Rovers for not being good enough is now back at Liverpool as a player. But, as an under twenty three coach, but he gets oh. to play for the under twenty threes. Oh, so oh, so he, he he's on as like a mentoring role. I, mean, I sat there when it got announced. I went, "What? Who's in on under twenty one?" Do, do you know what's what funny? If Man, if Man United did that, it would be too sentimental. Jobs for boys, atrocious decision. You've done it. You've done it. You've got Paul McShane doing it. It's just all these crap players that can't hack it in the leagues anymore. Just come back and be yeah. under twenty three coaches. Some, some, some of the best coaches were crap players, like. I mean, was it wasn't Jose semi pro? What, what, what did Klopp do? He, God, he, he has a good goal at the Bundesliga channel, rinse every year on his birthday. <laughs> yeah, if, you guys, if, you, if you guys go for an injury crisis this year, you know Spearing's coming in, right? He, he, I, I'm, pretty sure, I'm pretty sure he has to be registered. I'm pretty, to play with the under 23s, I think he has to be registered. So if we go through an injury crisis, I will have to have Jay Spear on a Liverpool football club's bench. In 2023, honestly, that would be nothing short of sensational. It, it, it that would be an amazing thing to watch and view. And Jason, it, it really back. wouldn't, it really wouldn't. No, it wouldn't. I, it just wouldn't. It, they, they released a picture of him today. It's it's horrifying. It's hor he, he looks about 40 and he's not under 21s. This is a very strange comment. Uh, Terry, for the world cup, will you not drink because you are not allowed to drink in Qatar? I'm not in, I won't be in Qatar though, my guy. Like, I, I, if I'm in, if I was in Qatar, I would respect the, I would, I would even, um, at the age I'm at, I wouldn't even do something cheeky, like try and sneak alcohol in, which I don't even know if you can do, but I wouldn't even do that because I would respect that country's laws. 
but I'm not going to be in guitar. So um, I like a drink and I'm going to have a drink. And it, that, that's it. Simple as that. If anyone, that'd be the weirdest thing for somebody to find offensive. I don't know. It's, 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 that would be very weird. Um, I'm not saying you do, uh, Zerge uh, Ganabri, but uh, we'll see. It definitely won't. Right. We've got some super chats here. Uh, great show. The Barca situation is becoming embarrassing. What a, f a fall from grace. That's another shot there. Thank you, Ma Ma Man Manuel. Yeah, Manuel. Yeah, man Manuel. I, 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 like, I like how the stream, you're not going through the whole rigmarole of converting back to pounds to find out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you just see 10, it's going. We'll have another <laughs> one. Why not? Uh, have another one. Congrats on 250. Love the channel. Big up to Terry and the panelists. And Igal has PTSD. Uh, if you know, you know. <laughs> yeah, I think like do you know what it is. It's not even just a gal. Like I can tell it's annoying a gal that I'm being positive. But the point is, even the other day he did this thing and it made me laugh. Where he was like, "You're basically going to be shit with or without Ronaldo, so you must be panicking that Ronaldo's going." And I'm like, well, "I'm just going to use your logic back at you. Based on your logic, why would I be? If we're going to be crap with or without him?" And this is the, this is the, the binary thinking of not just, just not a gal. This is so many United fans. They spent all of last season saying we scored less goals because Ronaldo's come in. And now with him leaving, they're saying, well, who's going to score the goals? The logic is warped. If Ronaldo stopped us scoring, then him leaving is only going to make us better. <laughs> it doesn't make sense to me. But I think, we'll, I think we'll score across all competitions 30 to 35 more goals next year. People take Ronaldo out of United and then just think you're playing with 10 men for this season because he's not there. And you just no one's going to get them goals now. You're not going to put a player in to replace them. Like, yes, they're not going to be as good as Ronaldo, but they're, they're not going to score zero goals and get zero assists and be a tree. They'll do something. But you, you're not, you're not my problem. <clears throat> not, not a problem because if we score 35 more goals and you know get 35 more points, I'll be, I'll be happy. <laughs> but this is this was going to happen if we score 35 more goals. Let's say we finish top four. I'll be happy. But all the people that either didn't want Ronaldo, hate Ronaldo, whatever it could be, it's going to be May Night fans, non Night fans. See, this is why Ronaldo ruined us. Taking out the fact that we've actually got a new manager, like we've got a better manager than the two that we had last season combined. So yeah. they'll take that out and they'll purely say, see, this is what happens when you don't have Ronaldo. And I'll, I'll, that, that's the only point I'm thinking. <sighs> We're gonna, yeah, but we'll be better. But what you, cost? Right? You, 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 know, you know exactly how it's gonna go, as you say, and it's, it's like if Bruno's better next year, you know they'll find a way of not praising Bruno. Mm. It will be, it'll be, it'll be. He's just a system player. He isn't as good as he's now looking. He's just a system player. Yeah, all players are system players. That's why. But you, you, they'll be the same man as said we're struggling because we don't have a system. It never makes sense. It's just, as I say, that's why I call these man fungus fans. They're the fungus fans because they have to live in shit. They, it has to be negative. It has to be downbeat because without it, what they don't get is they don't get the traction from the non-Man United fans. Because even people that subscribe to the terrorists are annoyed that I'm being positive about Man United. I tell you what would get me double the views this summer on Man United content would be me ranting about it. I'll double the, the, double the views because rivals would enjoy watching it. But I just can't sit on camera and lie about how I really feel about things, you know. Um, and listen, it, it, Gal was just bantering and trying to play devil's advocate. But all I just do is I just up the ante. So I thought what I'll do in this scenario is... I'll just go really serious and see what that does to the mood. In fact, I'll even play the voice note that I sent him because he messaged me after the stream and he was like, was that, was that serious? And then I sent him a voice note and this, this, this literally was a few minutes. He goes, are you really mad? And this is what I sent back. <laughs> of course I'm not, mate. It's just for the show and it? it's all good fun. Don't worry about it, mate. <laughs> that was it. Again, it's just for the show, it's just a bit of laugh. Do you know what I mean? Like me and Lee Gunner, like we, we get into heated debates and I mean what I say, but yeah. how I deliver it or what I might do, it's all just a little bit of fun. Imagine like, I don't know, it'd be boring if not. It really, really would be. The, uh, best, part, the, the best part was when our Colleen goes, um, so about Telemans, <laughs> like <laughs> all the silence. <laughs> It was great. Let's, I love a girl. A girl's a really good guy. And, he's a, you know, I've said it before, a big, big part of the football terrace, like all of you guys. And, you know, obviously we're sitting here because of the 250 thing. Well, I mean, I was going to stream it this time anyway, but like, and obviously we're going to have a big party on the on the 30th and, and, and it'd be nice. And it's funny, really, because I get accused of bullying a girl quite a lot. And I find, I find it really funny. It's like, of course, there's going to be individual. Like me and you, Nick, we very rarely disagree on things. Therefore, we haven't really had very many debates. But like... Mm. If I disagree with someone on a lot of stuff, then it's going to be more heated between us. And then the better you know somebody, the more friendly yeah, you the are. More, the more heated it can actually get. 
without yeah. and it will continue because it, it, it don't ha- it won't get personal like that way. You'll never feel with my best friends in the world. If we get into a heated conversation, we will be dropping C bombs on each other, but it isn't personal. And I think sometimes what people see is me saying, ah, shut up, you gal. But I know I can say that to him because we're mates. Does that make sense? Where if it was someone someone says to me, Oh, why don't you challenge like journalists when they say things? Well, because when a journalist comes on, I'm doing it in a hundred percent professional capacity. Even if I think they're chatting was, I just let them say the thing and let them move on. It's a different situation to sit with a couple of mates talking football it's it's and that's and that's the idea of the terrace the shows are all meant to feel and look a little bit what i do with dean and and ben and we've got some more journalists joining soon is very different to the top six show which is very different to like a match reaction show and it's, it's meant to feel and look different but uh, it shouldn't need explaining but it it, it seems it does <laughs> with some people um thoughts about newcastle they've had third Sorry, they, they had the third best record after uh, Eddie Howe came in, um, got his transfers in last season. Only City and Liverpool were better. Do you guys think they're going to do something next year in the league? Um, uh, they need a striker. They, they, they I don't know what's happened with that Etikeke or whatever that Rem striker is. It was on, it was off, he got injured, he didn't want to join, then he did, then whatever. If they don't get a striker, I don't think they'll... They, they could easily get top half next year if they get a striker. But if they don't, they're relying on Callum Wilson to stay fit mm. and do what Callum Wilson does. He's a good striker. He's a prem, Premier League standard striker, but he's got hamstrings made of cheese strings, so he doesn't mm. last. When, once I you like go it. past I that, like it's like, like Almiron up top or St. Matt. Sorry, sorry, Tom. Am I too old to eat cheese string? <laughs> I, like I didn't look. Cheese yeah, no, cheese string's nice. I mean, it's horrible, but nice at the same time. It's like, yeah. You know the thing with Newcastle, and I think we have to. I've I've seen this rodeo before, and I don't. Obviously, it's a bit different because they've got a lot of money, but there's been very good teams over periods of time, and you're like, well, if they continue that for 38 games, then they'll win the league. Yeah, there's a reason why they haven't won the league because they can't do it over 38 games. Like, yeah, they kept up with Man City and Liverpool for that period. What does that mean now? Mm. Not much. Like Eddie Howe will do a good job. I think top ten has to be is it will be a realistic target. It's not gonna be easy. It's not gonna be easy, but it's a realistic target. But don't be surprised if you just see mid, uh Newcastle kind of hovering around mid table for a couple of seasons before they really, you know, hit the you know, challenging for Europe on a consistent basis. Because the Premier League is not easy. They've got money, but they can't spend it all. Like they can't. Just because their owners are trillionaires, gazillionaires, it doesn't mean they can buy Neymar, Messi, and Ronaldo this summer. Like it just doesn't yeah. work. Like so when, when, yeah, when realistic. you're right. When City and Chelsea got their money, FFP didn't exist. So if there was no FFP, they would have signed four or five juggernauts this summer, and they'd have been able to do it. But they can't. They have to. And there's, there's even new rules that the Premier League are looking to bring in, where it's almost based on the size of your football club, there's going to be uh, essentially a, 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 a your sponsorships within market value. Because again, and Neville's right about this, no com- no real company would sponsor Newcastle more to sponsor their shirts than they would pay Man United because they don't have the same global reach, which, you know, economically, no company is going to go, right, we're going to do a five-year shirt sponsor with Newcastle and give you three billion like two billion pound like they tried to do a deal like that with like a with a cousin brother's business uh, out of the same country that shouldn't be allowed because we've seen with city and city essentially got away with it because nobody was looking but city situation now means anyone else that gets these types of owners everybody will be hot on it from day one because if it wasn't for the time barring rule city would have been found guilty and it's gonna that's why i said to people i think it's and most newcastle fans are on board with this it's gonna be a a decade-long process to raise the income, the money, and the quality. I don't think they'll win a league for at least 10 years. They're going to have to rotate the squad a couple of times, just so, because right now, you they, they've got to sell players to help boost FFP. Right now, they're looking at selling like Jeff Hendrick and Dwight Gale and their man for like 2 million at most. That's mm. not enough. They're going to have to rotate this squad a few times. So like, you'll see them bringing in players like Bruno and letting go of players like Bruno to just start up and how much give they have an FFP, it will take a bit of time, but they'll get there. They'll get there because they've just got enough money to get there. They've got enough money to fail and keep trying at it and keep mm. trying at it and keep trying at it. That's the, that's the annoying thing. Yeah, no, no doubt they have. And, and and they'll get there in the end. As you say, it's just going to take time for them to slowly increase. Because what they will get is big sponsorship deals. They just need to be within market value. But you'll probably find they'll have a shirt sponsor, 
a short sponsor, an arm sponsor. They'll just sponsor like the socks. They'll sponsor everything. You know what I mean? The players wear caps on their way out on the pitch. They'll just find, they'll find a way of getting the money in through the rules, but it will just take time. And the difference also is when Chelsea and City got their money, nobody else really did. The new TV deal money also hurts things because everyone's got money now. Like, see, again, if City, and, if City and Chelsea got taken over by the same owners now... They wouldn't have got to winning as quickly as they did. It would just take a much longer period. Well, Chelsea were already a Champions League team. So, again, it was a little different. They had a very good team. Um, and Chelsea always underachieved. They always had much better teams in their league position, really yeah. suggested, even in my whole life. So, Chelsea's situation was a little different. To, to, you know, and they were. You can, you can already see, just look at the, the transfer market right now. When City and Chelsea got their money, they attacked the transfer market immediately. Like, literally, remember, when City got the, the Colossus, they were taken over already by a billionaire, but I think he had some criminal case in his... Some dodge, so some it. dodge, you know. Yeah. So he had to sell it to the Shakes. And they bought it, if I'm correct, on deadline day. And then they signed Rubinho, Rubinho 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 on to... deadline day for 32, 32 and a half million. They tried to sign uh, Dimitar Berbatov, I think it was that same summer. And obviously, Fergie picked him up from Manchester Airport, so that didn't happen. But... They literally attacked the market. We know Chelsea, everyone, Crespo, Mutu, Kesman. Uh, yeah, all, all the players they bought immediately. Newcastle, they, they're they not, they've got, obviously we bought some players in January, but you can see the process already this summer. Mm -hmm. it had, it's, it's more measured. It's not as easy yeah. as it was. But yeah, as you said, they'll, they'll get there. Yeah. You're saying like the 2004 Chelsea window where you just saw them, like what one day there'd be three, four signs a day. You just, yeah, whoever, whoever whoever's name is in the paper one day, which is a Chelsea player the next day, they're, they're taking a lot more of a measure. I do like Newcastle's business as well. I think Nick Pope's a fantastic keeper. Mm. Sven Botman, I thought he was off to Milan. They've got him. Why Liverpool linked to uh, Botman a year or so ago? I don't know. I don't think he would have worked uh, in our high Liverpool, line, to be fair. Liverpool were. I mean, yeah, they've done 60 million. I mean, you've got to think as well. I mean, they obviously signed Willock for a lot of money. They spent 131 million last season. Some of that was before they came in. 60 million so far now. So in the last two like years, it's nearly 200 million of investment already. And obviously, like Bruno um Gimaraes, excellent signing. You know, I, I didn't realize they spent they spent 27 million on Chipri. I thought it was not Chipri. 27 million they spent on Chris Wood. Yeah, that's a bit of a <laughs> that was a bit of a mess. He had a release clause of about was it 30 in the, this summer? So Burnley yeah. like, like, will sell him. So, to be what... fair, neither team won that situation, did they? We all thought Burnley got the better side, getting Vegas then He's off to Besiktas on loan now. They're not going to feed for him. Yeah. Like, they, they just both got the crap out of it. No, I get that. Um, Terry, I hope um, the board backs Eric. Oh, he's got 89 to do. He's got 89. Oh, this is going to kill me. Um, Terry, even if even if United finish sixth uh, and fail to win the Europa League, isn't again? I've said before about where we come. We'll get more into that later on in the in, in the window. That's, that, that's, that's ten pounds. Oh, you, oh, you're not converting. <laughs> no, it's, it's ten quid. Yeah, yeah. I saw a thing drop up. Yeah, I, I think like for me, I'm going to judge it more on how we're playing and the direction that we look like we're going in rather than exactly where we finish and what we do of course that's got to be contextual if we're in in, in third position with 10 games to go in and we collapse i'm not good I, I don't think i'd say sack the manager still like I, it really depends the only time i think i'd say sack the manager is if there's we, we don't change in the league we're as bad as last year the football is even worse then you'll go shit this guy was a like this guy was a fraud but it would take a lot uh, if Chelsea get De Litt, the Premier League will have the best four centre-backs in Europe. Diaz, Van Dijk, De Litt and Harry Lankai. <laughs> I like that, my friend. Uh, Seamus, Seamus here. Seamus says, loving the content, mate. Um, Ari, Newcastle, don't they Don't they have in excess of 300 million they can spend within FFP because of Ashley's underspending? Yeah, that's true. Because they can also make a, a loss of a certain amount over a, I guess over a three year period it's a little bit yeah. confusing and they kind of they'll, they'll they'll circumvent it by going right well we can lose this now because we know we're going to get new new sponsors in at this point and, and balance the books but they don't want to waste it you know you don't want too many 27 million pound chris woods because then you're lumbered with over over overpriced mm -hmm. dead wood so they might just you know i would I, like i said i didn't expect them to go out this summer and spend 300 million they're probably better off sp spreading that spending over a two or three year period as opposed to just doing it all in one long, long summer. There's your, there's your shot, my mate. Thank you. 
I am messed up now. Uh, Terry, what do you guys make of, of these ESPN and TalkSport X players slamming Eric Ten Hag even before we kick a ball? There's been a lot of that. Have you seen it? Like the discipline, too disciplined. Danny, Mal- Danny Mal- Murphy. Malassia's Mal- Mal- crap. Mug. It's only cost 13. Uh, yeah, go on, mate. Sorry, go on. No, Danny Murphy is a mug. And that's only because he paid for Liverpool. What he's been saying about Ten Hag, he's an absolute idiot. Um, no, he, he he's, he's really trying to... I, I, I wouldn't even say it's his job per se, because he's supposed to be a pundit. He's not just like, I'm a fan and I'm on TV, like your radio. No, you're supposed to give some, some, you know, a bit more intelligent dialogue. So they're going through these, um, these points of uh, discipline that Ten Hag's um, put out there, apparently, or he's actually said to the players, and obviously somebody's leaked it. And literally every single one, all Danny Murphy's saying is, yeah, yeah, yeah that ain't going to work. You ain't going to do that. No, you can't implement that. What's the point? And at least Simon Jordan, Jordan's there like, well, you understand the theoretical reasoning behind why he would do that, why he would say this. Now, yeah, we can't. he can't sit in the player's house and make sure that they don't eat, you know, uh, crap food. But to have it as a rule, at least, you know, he, you know that he's... I'm thinking, Danny Murphy, you know what the, the, the purpose of it is. Why are you being so obtuse to try and make it like it's a bad thing? The same thing yeah. with the whole yeah. thing. He, like, I think he, he kind of kind of backtracked a little bit in his last um, show with uh, Simon Jordan and Jim White in terms of Ericsson. But he's been so negative about that signing. I'm like, it's it's it's, it's no risk. Well, because he, that signing doesn't make us Premier League champions, you can't understand us make, uh, making a signing. So who are we supposed to sign? Well, Messi, n- Neymar, n- Mbappe? N- no, no, no signing this summer is going to make us Premier League champions. Exactly. So... <laughs> But this has been my reason for wanting to kind of defend Man United to a degree this summer is because the level, like I've just seen like people, people like quote tweeting that the things that supposedly De Jong said no to us and why we've got bad luck is lack of prestige. It's like, it's funny how when sport write that, people latch onto it like it's the truth. But when they said two days ago that his priority is to join Man United, none of them were quote tweeting it. None of them were talking about it. This is all what Danny Murphy is doing. It's like, I know what's got, what gets traction right now is slagging off Manchester United. I even saw the discipline stuff. They were like, no exceptions for being late. What if someone's kid's sick? Yeah, that, 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 that was always like, what, what if there's been an accident and on the road and I can't get there? Like, yeah, Eric Ten Hag's not going to go, oh, well, that's, that's, not, that's when, not good when, enough. When, when, when a boss says, when you've got a good boss, and now there are some people in the world that would, any reason, when I say, like, zero tolerance on lateness, what they mean is is zero tolerance on on stupid reasons. I overslept. Or I stayed out too late last night, or whatever, or whatever else. If if a player rings in and says, "Listen, boss, I'm I'm not going to be in training today. My kid's really sick. We've got to go to hospital." He isn't going to say you're dropped. Like he does. But the point is, <laughs> Ten Hag doesn't need to explain all the loopholes in his rules to the media. Use your brain. What he means is is that there's no turning up 15 minutes late. If, if everybody else got there okay because the traffic wasn't bad, and your kid isn't, if you're a player that doesn't have a kid, and you're and you're and you're five minutes late for training, you're in trouble. That is what he's talking about. There is no oh, me and the missus had a like you and your missus having a fight isn't a good enough reason. Get out of the house. Literally, you're sick. Your kid's sick. Someone's died or there's traffic. They're pretty much like the only three or four reasons that are ever acceptable for being late in this world. And of course, Ten Hag is going to allow that. But the, uh, this is what people are going to do to what Ten Hag. And this is why I hope that the football improves straight away. One of the reasons why I want it is because that changing straight away will get everybody off of his back. If three or four games in, we look really poor, the, the knives will be getting sharpened and they'll start the narratives. I looked at this is how I know that the clubs get treated differently. Look at the four players that. Conte is left out of his squad. And uh, 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 Winks, and a couple of others. I forget their names. Regulon and if jo- when jo- when, if Jose Mourinho, when Jose Mourinho did something similar with Bastian Schweinsteiger, he was called a bully. The way Man United get spoken about, I'm telling you that if Eric Ten Hag turned around to Marshall and said, you're not coming on tour because I don't want you, he'd be called a bully. It'd be twisted into a negative. Everyone is celebrating that level of discipline from Antonio Conte, excluding players that they may not be able to sell. Our manager says, if you are late for training, you're getting dropped. And he said, that's too, that's too strict. That's horrible. It's, and this is why I'll defend it. Like, and as I said to a gal the other day, I can defend Ten Hag because Ten Hag right now is not a failure at Man United. His approach hasn't failed. Oh yeah, but your owners are bad. Yeah, I know. And 
right now they're letting Ten Hag do his thing. But I'll judge, I'll judge the, the, the outcome when the outcome happens. But right now, Ten Hag's doing all the things we need. You know, big discipline, making them work hard. And even when I was watching some of the training drills, I think they'd be very clever with what they've released. You can see there's a lot of ball work, but that's how they're getting their fitness up. And they're kind of just showing you this is what we're going to do. I listened to Scott McTominay speak today, and he sort of said, "We." Re and you know when you listen to someone, and I didn't remember hearing this in the Ralph, and it wasn't – all they said about Oli was he really like him. It was, we really like the ideas they've got. We're really enjoying the way they're making us train. And I, I, I haven't forgiven the players for the way they down tools last season. Oh, but at the same God. time, I always knew that when a, when a top-quality manager and coach comes in, they're training in the modern way, they're behaving in the right way, there was going to be an uplifting act. And this is why I keep saying everyone, we haven't got to sign 10 new players this summer to make it the next step, which is get back into the top four. This squad – Everybody was saying she challenged the title last year. They didn't all become bad and crap over a course of a year. The club fell apart. So many of these players that were poor last season, Bruno, listen, forget how, forget the next two, three years. This season, I really think Luke Shaw, Rashford, Bruno, I even think Martial could, Donny van der Beek, Fred, you'll see another level from them because they've got something that didn't exist for three years a system and a level of coaching and training that we have. Honestly, I don't think we've had, we've had a level of coaching and training like this since Fergie, even LVG was past his best and didn't have the right players for it. Like, and I, I I'm not saying rivals are scared of it, but they kind of know that this could work. So there's an element of sort of like, well, it's we better the one that's got the best chance of working. It's the one that when I look at it on paper, I go, if, if, when you look at every, and Ollie, for, for, like you, you look at United and you break it down for three, four years. This is the one when in three, four years I could still see Ten Hag doing well with a squad that could work. That's why it's a bit more annoying than Mourinho because there was always the three-year thing with Mourinho. With Van Gaal, it was your style of football was just crap. It was not sustainable for long enough. Oli was just Oli, and Rangnick just couldn't get anything out that squad. With Ten Hag, everything's fallen sort of into place. I'm not. It's not scared of. He's instantly becoming a threat or, you know, challenging back in two, three years because I don't think that will happen. But in terms of becoming sustainable and being able to just compete for sustained pay, because right now you're almost a yo-yo. You are a bit yo-yo at the minute. You go from second, third to sixth, to second to sixth, to fourth to sixth, seventh. Like it's just bouncing in and out, in and out. Yeah. Ten Hag is someone who can come in and get fourth, fourth, third, fourth, third, second. Like consistently, that's what United need uh, to build. Say it first. Say it first. Uh, He's going to win the league. No. <laughs> but this, this is the crazy thing. I honestly think if we spend the right amount of money, but we just stay on a course and stay with a plan, and we don't deviate, we let the manager pick who he wants. Because I, 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 I said this at the time: if we would have sold Martial and Pogba and brought in the Perisic's and the players that Jose wanted, I think we'd have won. A, and, and and back Jose one hundred, we'd have, we'd have won a major trophy with Jose. I, I always believe that. Maybe not in the style of football that we wanted, but we would have won something with him. We have to st if we if we give Ten Hag everything he wants and we build it in his image, he'll win something major with Manchester United. But I believe he's that good of a coach. There's in, as I was saying on the stream earlier on today. There's three. There's three. Oh, by the way, there's a super chat here. Saying, uh, what about uh, the no alcohol on a game week rule? I think it's a brilliant rule. Again, I'm having a drink now. It's going to seriously impact my performance tomorrow morning when it comes to working in a stream because they get up and you're groggy. Now, no footballer is doing two thirds of a bottle of vodka or shots, but if you have just two, if you have a pint or two of beer two days before a game, that 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 could take a percent or two off of your performance that stops your team from winning. So I think it's a brilliant rule. There's a shot on you. Uh, Thank you. But like I was saying earlier, there's three there's three things. Like I was saying, there's three things at Manchester United. There is the initial improvements this year that, that are needed that I'm going to focus on and getting better at playing football. There is Ten Hag's overall target of getting us back to winning Premier Leagues to be looked at as a success. And then there's the overall vision for the club, which is when Ten Hag in five, six, seven years time, if he's successful, leaves for whatever reason, we need to make sure the next manager has a very similar outlook and philosophy. And we carry a club culture and a club philosophy that, that precedes that manager. But I can't, but people are like, like some people can't ring fence those three short, medium, and long term goals for the manager and the club from each other. And I don't understand why they can't. And that's how I kind of look at this Ten Hag situation. It's very much in the short term, make the football better, be more competitive, make those improvements. I even heard someone say that oh, I shouldn't be like, talking about the, the team 
that, that comes second, like it's going to matter. No, he wants to show people that if you come to Man United, you can improve. Man United are moving in the right direction. Because if we do improve next year, even if we don't make top four, we look better, play better football, more competitive. Next summer, it's easier again to convince people to join. And it's a step change to get to back to where we've got to be. Anyone that thought that Ten Hag was going to come in, we we're going to sell, sell and release 15 players and buy 15 and challenge for the title in one year, you're actually you're a liar. No way did you believe that. Um, is this the game, lol? Over to you. Oh, another one. Go on there. There's another oh, one. Yeah. Honestly, I, I'm getting so. I mean, I'm glad the stream's nearly over because I'm actually going to go to bed after this because I am feeling <laughs> one, one of the shows I really want to make and it just hasn't been the time to make it. It would be a Sunday evening show and I want like, I want to do it in the same room around round table. Someone's going to steal this idea now. And I'd call it the football mashup. Because again, me and Nick's from a part of the world where we, when we were younger, you get mashup. You drink too much, right? But the football mashup where you just sit there, you start the stream all sober, and you sit there for like two, two and a half hours talking football and just drinking. And you just see how it goes. <laughs> no real, no real loose agenda, but you just sit there and drink and you go. Because you see that the start of it, everyone being sober, by the end of it, everyone is wrecked. I think that would be a really good piece of content. But obviously, a lot of risk. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of risk. There's a lot of risk to a show like that because it could go horribly wrong. But I definitely would love to make it. But uh, there we go. Right, there's your there's your shot, mate. I don't even want to do this one. You know, look, I'm just delaying now because my, my my throat is. Oh, we play in three days, don't we? We've got pre season. Yeah, we play you. Yeah, we do. I mean, yeah. There's a guy that tweeted actually saying, "Don't buy MUTV." He goes, "I'm going to post a link on. I'll send it for you, Unique." So I'll put. I'll goes, "I'm going to post a link 15 minutes before every game on here. You guys can use." And he went, "It isn't." I don't know how he's doing it, but he's doing it. Plus, yeah, it's what it is. I'm like, sweet. I've, I've, I've bookmarked it. I, I, I will oh, is, this, um, is this for the preseason? Man United, yeah. What? What? Wait, when are we playing the first game? On the 12th. Tuesday. Tuesday, Tuesday, 2 p.m. UK time. 2 p.m. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Probably like 2 I don't even know what players are going to get played, though, like on either side. Because we've only just had like half our good players turn up today. So, I. Like, well, Not a we clue who's got young. up front for us. We won't have the young, so you might have a chance. Oh, come off it. <laughs> oh, some news here. Uh, Lucas, is it, how is that pronounced, the, the, the Leon midfielder? Paqueta. Paqueta. Oh. Uh, the Leon play. It's, the reports that Arsenal are now pushing hard to sign him. It, it, I assume that's instead of um, Tillerman then. They're really trying to make this little Brazilian light like uh, Wolves are doing with um, Portugal. This is ridiculous. Gabriel Jesus, Martellini, uh, Gabriel Magdalene, whatever his name is at the back. They tried it with Rafinha. Couldn't get that yeah, one done. Yeah, Rafinha and, uh, and Paqueta. Bloody yeah, Where does, where does Paqueta people? play, though? Uh, midfield, centre midfield. <laughs> like, where, though? In, in no, the he's, he's, a, he's a playmaker, like a playmaker. So I guess he's more of an eight than anything. Uh, he can play ten. I think so, yeah. Play Are they going to play Odegaard and Fikessa together? Uh, that's a lot of left footers, but you technically... No, no, you have to play Odegaard in 10, and you could play Paqueta next to Partey. Oh, well, next to somebody in the middle anyway. Well, yeah. <laughs> Granite Gran survives another year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but Paqueta, from what I've seen, Paqueta is a good, tidy footballer. Um, but uh, this just ruins Brazil's chance to win the World Cup, playing for Arsenal, like... <laughs> it's mad the level change in Brazil. Like the, you look, the, you look at the Brazilian national squad. Players of the ability of look, I think Gabriel Jesus and Richardson are good players. Gabriel Jesus, mm. but players like that wouldn't have even been on the reserve, reserve, reserve list 10, 12, 15 years ago. Like it's mad how the level in Brazil. Do you think that's because Brazilians are, are, are leaving a lot younger than they used to? I. I... <laughs> A lot of international football is becoming very Europeanized, um, where everyone's playing a similar style, which doesn't, I don't think it suits, or, or it doesn't suit, or, or and it doesn't bring the best out of those players. So I talk South Americans, especially, um, specifically Brazilians, Argentinians maybe, and Africans. Like, those, when, when we used to watch the World Cup, 94, 98, 2002, even 2006, like when Ivory Coast kind of burst into the scene, especially the African teams, it was like they brought a, a different style. This is how the Africans play. This is how the Europeans play. This is how the South Americans play. Now everyone wants to do this possession base, uh, you know, kind of yeah, slow paced international football. And it's like, yeah, if you're going to play the Europeans at their own game, you're going to lose. 
And there's no coincidence that a South American team ain't won the World Cup since 2002. And they haven't really been uh, over, well, I would say overly competitive. Argentina reached the final, but it, the, 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 the um, favourites have always been European. So I think, yeah, leaving Brazil early, going to play in Europe, it, it probably plays into it um, and makes them uh, maybe a bit more just predictable. You know what you're yeah, going to get from them no, rather than no. the, the, the The thing is, that, that, that's what annoys me most about England and Southgate at the minute because we have, like Mourinho, I, I was watching something Mourinho said, you, your national teams naturally, <laughs> your, your national teams will naturally play the style of your country's like league. So the Italians play a more defensive possession-based style and all that. We have the most high-intensity league in the world and it, it could work on the international stage all our players bar, San, bar Bellingham now play in the same league so they'd be naturally suited to the sit up to the setup and the pace of it and instead we play a back five slow paced tippy tappy more defenders than attackers it doesn't make sense like can our, can our England man just just have a pair of bullets for once and try something Jesus Christ it's not hard yeah <laughs> Oh, I get that, boys. I'm gonna to have to end the stream though because so I'm you're, you're finished, mate. Finished. You <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. Listen, everyone who's tuned in, thank you. I appreciate all the subscribers and everything you do for the terrace. It means a great. I'll be back at some point tomorrow. <laughs> I don't know when. Um, boys, appreciate big love to all of you. Um, but until next time. <laughs> <laughs> Look after yourselves. Take bye. Take bye. <laughs> Take care. <laughs> Goodbye. God bless. Someone said to me a minute ago, drinking is haram. Not for me, my guy. <laughs> for you, definitely. <laughs> Respect your religion. Eat my products, everybody else, by the way, that, that you're celebrating that today. Oh, I'm off. Take care. Goodbye. <laughs> and I'll 